In this segment, we're going to look at the uh, fresh water system. Uh, we have quite a bit of different things on this coach than you would normally see on another coach. There is, of course, a water manifold. Um, everything is home run to the appliances, so you can simply turn a dial, a valve, and turn off any specific appliance. Uh, the advantage of that is there's no fittings between the appliance and the water manifold. And if you have a leak in, say, your kitchen sink, you can turn it off right here, um, both hot and cold individually. Um, it's a really nice setup. It's um, a little more costly in the number of uh, PEX lines you run, um, but Pe PEX is relatively cheap. Um, also, all modern RVs use PEX. Uh, it's way better than the polybutyl lines they used to use. You can freeze these PEX lines and they will not crack. Um, I don't suggest that you let them freeze, but um, PEX is pretty impervious to cracking. So, so the water manifold is a nice feature. It's sitting here. Some, some manufacturers put it on the outside um, and then put a door over it. Uh, I prefer it actually in here because it stays warmer. When it's on the outside with just a door over it, it would be more inclined to be subject to cold. Um, and although the PEX lines won't crack, some of the fittings are plastic and they can crack uh, in the manifold. Uh, so I, I prefer the water manifold to be in the main um, compartment where it's better heated. On the opposite side here, we have something that most people probably haven't seen. This is a whole house a reverse osmosis water system. So the water comes into this and its purpose is, is to make the best water that you can make. It takes the minerals out of the water, takes the chlorine out of the water, uh, it gives you very good drinking water. And, and it services the entire uh, RV instead of just a point of use, which you typically see under the kitchen sink with a little faucet for just drinking water. The purpose of servicing the whole RV is to keep the minerals out of all your appliances, your dishwasher, your washer, washing machine, your toilet, especially your toilet. The, the seals in the toilet get mineral deposits on them because you're moving around into all kinds of different areas of the country. You'll get mineral deposits on your seals. You'll have to service your toilet. This avoids all of that. Um, so you have good drinking water everywhere in the house. You have great shower water. You don't get spotting on your, your glass shower walls. Uh, or um, in, your, in your sinks, uh, it's just a better way to do it. So the, the water comes in from the manifold, comes across here, enters the um, three pre-filters, sedimentation one, sedimentation five, and then a charcoal block filter. Then it goes up into the reverse osmosis membranes. This is a dual membrane system, produces 100 gallons per day, uh, which is adequate for an RV. Um, and I'll talk about how that's stored in a minute. And that, then you have a diverter here. You can, you can bypass the system and just go back to the manifold and supply the house. Or you can um, use the system and it comes down through here, through a pump, through, the man, through these, and then out to the fresh water tank. All the water is stored in the fresh water tank and you run off your pump all the time. So our RV pump is always on and that's what's supplying pressure to the house. The shoreline that's supplying water into here um, stops supplying pressure at this point. We, we pump out of our tank. So we make water here, we store it in the fresh water tank, and then when we want to use it, we use it out of the fresh water tank. Now, the fresh water tank has two valves in it, a high valve and a low valve. So when it gets down to about 80% of, of use, you've used 20% of it, down to about 80%, it'll turn this pump on and make more water. Um, reverse osmosis systems uh, do waste water. Uh, you get about one third, maybe a little bit more, of retained water out of it. So you're rejecting about two thirds of the water. It's part of the process. Some people think that's not ecologically sound, but RVs use so little water anyway, relative to a house or, or commercial applications, that I don't really have any problem with that. Um, but when we are making water, we are rejecting about two-thirds of the water, keeping about one-third of it. Um, and that's the filtered water. Coming back into here, we, after we make our water and pull it out of the tank and, and send it to the kitchen, we have a specific 
uh, charcoal filter that just services the kitchen. And the purpose of this is that it, it runs through another charcoal filter and it imparts flavor back into the water because that's the water you're going to drink typically is your kitchen water or use it for cooking or in your refrigerator. Um, um, RB, R, RB RO water is kind of flat tasting after it's been through all these filters and the membranes. It tastes, it doesn't have much taste to it. So this charcoal filter puts the taste back in it. You have really nice water to drink. Um, and you can drink it out of any of your taps in the kitchen and get the pro this process. If you drink it out of your bathroom, it's only going through here. Um, so, you know, it doesn't taste quite as good as the kitchen water, but it's still very good water. You'll see I have a portable water softener here. A lot of people will just use a water softener and not use an RO system. This does um, help your water, it takes some of the hardness out of your water. And it's good to use this um, in front of or before the, your RO membranes. Your RO membranes work harder if they have to, if they have to address the things that the uh, a very hard water. It just, you know, they'll have a shorter life and they'll work harder. You won't get as much output from them. So you can soften the water before it comes into the RO membranes and then you'll get a, a better quality product um, without exercising your membrane so hard. So usually I'll, I will put this out by um, the water pedestal uh, and then run the water into my shore um, line here and feed the RO membranes. So that's feeding it softened water already. So the RO membranes don't have to soften the water all the way. And they will take, this uses salt process. And if you ever drank um, softened water, you'll notice that it can be a little salty if you don't, don't filter it. Um, the RO membranes will take all of the salt out of the water. So it restores the water to its pre-salt conditions. So I, I recommend this. Um, do you have to use it? No, you don't have to use it. Um, but it will um, extend the life of your RO membranes if you do use it. I don't use this all the time. I will use it if I'm into really hard water and we have a little tester that we can test the, the, the pre-processed water uh, with and determine whether it's really hard. If it's really hard, I'll use this in front of it. I used to use this exclusively in front of my um, um, other system before I had the whole house RO, but uh, these are definitely worth having if you don't put a whole house RO system in. And, and if, you're, if you don't want to put a whole house system in, it's definitely worthwhile putting a point of use RO system under your kitchen sink. If you're traveling around a lot, you're going to find that it really helps you with, your, uh, with the drinking water that you're going to use and the cooking water you're going to use. Okay, this is a Traveler uh, DirecTV Slimline uh, automated satellite dish. It's open air dish. You'll notice it's not a dome. Domes are kind of out of vogue now. There are big disadvantages to domes. With DirecTV, you have your require you, you need an open air dish like this. Um, this provides much better satellite reception. It doesn't rain fade as much as the domes do, uh, and it, and it picks up all the DirecTV satellites. Uh, dish, there's a comparable satellite receive satellite dish for a dish TV. Um, as so, uh, WineGuard ha covers both of them. Um, this is the preferred uh, dish to have. Uh, it picks up HD very well. Uh, it really isn't much else to say about it. It simply works by pressing a button inside, and as long as you have clear line of sight to the southern sky, you're going to get good reception on your TV. Okay, for over-the-air TV, um, where it's available, we use this Batwing. It's a motorized automated Batwing, but also by WineGuard. It, it, you, you simply press a button inside, it cranks up, you can rotate it uh, inside uh, electronically. There's a control panel in the utility compartment. Uh, normally what I do with this is besides using it for over-the-air TV, which I generally don't use over-the-air TV, I depend on my direct TV um, for, for TV viewing. But I'll mount um, Wi-Fi equipment to this so that I crank this up and now my Wi-Fi repeater system can get better line of sight to the access point. So that's what I primarily use this for. That equipment isn't mounted on here yet, but this is a very good over-the-air um, TV uh, receiver. So um, again, some people use over-the-air all the time. They don't have satellite. So this, this is state-of-the-art equipment.